<clears throat> so, say this is your wing box and you want to calculate the distribution of shear flow around the section. Where are you going to have shear flow? In between the booms. So you're going to have, going anti-clockwise, from boom 1 to boom 2, shear flow, which we're going to denote as Q1, 2. Now, from boom 2 towards boom 3, Q2, 3. From boom 3 to boom 5, and so on. Okay, so first of all, how do you know what formula you have to use? Because there's a big derivation that you don't actually need. So this depends on if you have axes of symmetry. Do we? Yes, you have one here. This means that i, x, y is zero. And because you have an axis of symmetry and i, x, y is zero, the formula for calculating shear flow between booms is gonna be qs, that's how we denote, um, minus sy, so shear force in the y direction over the second moment of area, sum of your boom area multiplied by the distance of the from the neutral axis towards the boom areas, in this case the radial distance you can say, this one's zero anyway, which you then motiv um, which you then add Q naught. Why are we adding Q naught? Because this is a closed section, you can see from boom one all the way back to boom one, it's a closed section. So you're going to have to make a cut somewhere, say here between one and two, and you're going to have to take into consideration the shear flow previously from that point and add it to the shear flow you have in the section. If this was an open open section, you wouldn't have had to use any Q0 because you wouldn't have had to make any cuts and take into account any previous shear flows. So, let's say what we're trying to find now, each of these components. Minus SY, I mean ignore the minus, just SY. Your shear force in the y direction, what is it? This one, 100. Now, the second moment of area, we need to find this. How are we going to find this? The formula you'd usually use for finding second moment of area is this. In this case, boom area, multiplied by the distance from the neutral axis to the specific boom, and you square it. So, Ixx is going to be, we said we need boom areas and distances from neutral axis. You have boom areas here. So if we said Ixx is boom area times by distance squared, for beam 1, that's your area. And we need a distance from the neutral axis and square it. The distance from the neutral axis all the way to boom 1 is 0 because there's no distance between the neutral axis and boom 1. So if you then do 200 and you multiply by this, which you said is 0, you're just going to get 0. The contribution from boom 1 for Ixx. Now, let's see the contribution for boom 2 for Ixx. The area is 3000 millimeters squared and the distance the distance from the neutral axis to boom 2 is this. So the radial distance of 500 millimeters. So you're going to do boom area 3000 millimeters times by 500 millimeters. Next up Contribution from boom 3. The area of boom uh, boom area of 3 is 4,000 millimeters times it by the distance from the neutral axis to boom 3. Once again, 500. And you square it. So plus 
um, 400 times by 500 squared. Okay, what's left is the contribution from 3 and 5. Um, no, no. So we've done 1, which was 0. We've done 2, which is this one. We've done 3, which is this one. So what's left is the contribution from boom 5 and boom 6 for second moment of area. Anything you notice here due to this axis of symmetry is going to be the same as, as, as from 3 and 2. So this one was 0. This one and this one are these two. So if you just multiply them by 2, you get the contribution from these two as well. So multiply this by 2. After the calculation, you're going to get IXX is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 9 millimeters cubed. We're working in millimeters. Okay, so now we know the shear force in the y direction. We have calculated IXX. Q0, we're going to leave as Q0 for now. So to find the shear flow between the booms, we just have to sub in these values for each boom, of course. So, shear flow between boom 1 and 2. Between boom 1 and 2. This way, anti-clockwise. You have to add the contribution of shear flow from boom 1 and the contribution, because we said we're making a cut, because it's a closed section, from Q0. So, what's Q1 going to be? You know SY, you know IXX, this one we said we're leaving as it is. So, just need to sub in BR and Y0. Not Y0, um, B and Y. Your boom area for 1 is 200. And the distance from the neutral axis towards the boom we're looking at, in this case, boom 1, is 0. It is exactly on the, um, on the axis of symmetry, so it's 0. So even though you have 200, when you multiply by 0, you get 0. And because this term is 0, your whole value for shift flow from Q1 and Q2, so this part, is going to be 0 apart from the value of Q0, which you're then adding. So you can just say the shear flow from Q1, from boom 1 to 2, is Q0. Okay, next up. Shear flow from boom 2 towards boom 3. Minus SY over IXX is the formula. Area of boom 2, because we're going from 2 towards 3. So you're going to take the area at 2 and the distance from the neutral axis towards boom 2, not boom 3. I mean, it just so happens they're both the same in this case, but it may not always be like this. So just make sure you start from boom 2. Here you start from boom 1 and so on. And then add Q0. Okay. Um, YQ0, because this is your value of Q1 to 2. So basically, when you're trying to find the shear flow between 2 and 3 in this case, you add the contribution from boom 2, because we're going towards boom 3, and the previous contribution, which was from 1 to 2. And in this case, 1 to 2 just so happened to be Q0. So it would make more sense to write here um, Q1, 2, but it's the same as Q0 in this case. Okay, so now, what values do we have? Um, y was 100 kilonewtons. So 100 times by 10 to the power 3, because it's in kilonewtons and we just want newtons, divide by IXX, which we calculated to be 3.5 times 10 to the power of 9. It's already in millimetres, we're working in millimetres. 
Now, boom area of 2, 3,000. So times this by 3,000. And the distance, which we're then going to square from the neutral axis towards boom 2, is 500 millimeters. And we square this. So, adding the previous contribution of shear flow, you're going to get um, minus 2.857 times 10 to the power of minus 5 times by the bracket gives you 1.5 times 10 to the 6 plus Q0. So, finally, Q23 is minus 42.86 plus Q naught. Okay, next up. After two, after boom two, we have boom three. So now we want to find the contribution of shear flow from boom three to boom five. So, boom three to boom five. Once again, minus S, Y, I, X, X is your formula. B, boom area of 3, this time, because we're going from boom 3 towards boom 5. And the distance, which is square, also of boom 3. And add the previous contribution of shear flow which in this case happens to be Q23. But we can just write this in. So plus minus 42.86 plus Q0, which is Q23 shear flow from previous state. Okay, after you just plug all the numbers in, you're going to get that the shear flow between boom 3 and 5, so from boom 3 towards boom 5, is minus 100 plus Q0. Next up, so this was from 3 to 5, next up is from 5 to 6. So, shear flow between boom 5 and 6 is, once again, the formula. Uh, minus s boom 5 distance from neutral axis towards boom 5 plus the previous contribution of shear flow which in this case was 3 to 5 before 5 to 6 we had 3 to 5 before 5 to 6 the contribution of shear flow can be summed up as from 3 to 5 so instead of writing plus Q325, you can just write this. Minus 100 plus Q0. Plug in the numbers. So minus 100, you know, whatever this is. And we just need the boom area of boom 5 and the distance of boom 5 from the neutral axis. Boom area of 5, that's 4,000 millimetres, and the distance from the neutral axis of boom 5, so the distance from the neutral axis of boom 5 is this. Once again, it's just the radius, this one. See, it's the same for this circular, semicircle, parabolic shape, whatever, it's just 500 millimetres again. So you plug in the numbers and you're going to get Q526 as minus 42.86 plus Q0. Finally, after 5 to 6, next up would be boom 6. So from boom 6, the shear flow is going to be the contribution of the previous state, so shear flow between 5 and 6. And 6 to 1. So, 
from four six to one. Minus the previous one, Min so minus mm, that one, um, yeah, and eventually after all the numbers you're going to get that the shear flow from boom 6 towards boom 1 is going to be the same as Q0. Why is this? We said shear flow from boom 6 towards boom 1 is Q0. This makes sense because look at the symmetric axes. From boom 1 towards boom 2, we also found that the shear flow is Q0. So it's symmetric. So all that's left now is to find Q0. And if you want to take moments about point zero, um, that's another thing for another day.